So according to royal insiders, <laughs> Harry and Meghan <laughs> would accept an offer to spend Christmas with the royal family at Sandringham, but they are yet to receive such an invite from the king. Why would they even expect one? The Duke of Sussex may have spoken to King Charles on his 75th birthday last week. We know that because they leaked it in advance. But should they be welcomed with open arms or has too much damage been said uh, over the past year and course? We're joined now by royal broadcaster and historian Rafe Haydel Manku. Morning, Rafe. Um, first of all, how do we keep hearing about these situations where Meghan and Harry are cast as the victims again in this royal story? Well, of course, everything is now being briefed by friends and sources close. We know that the king was actually quite disappointed that the private phone call he had with Harry on uh, the king's 75th birthday was yet again leaked to the press. And he's trying very much to have the focus on his public life. And whilst he's, of course, as a loving father, he's very happy to have a conversation with his estranged son. You know, he wasn't the one who was leaking this to the, to the press. But, you know, uh, I think this whole story is quite remarkable, you know. I mean, Christmas Day is infamously a day, you know, when we, you know, we all have too many snowballs and cherry brandies and get into family, uh, family fights. But you can just imagine in terms of Christmas fights, Harry and Meghan's presence at Sandringham would quite literally be, a, you know, a battle royale. And you can only imagine what, you know, the Prince of Princess of Wales will be thinking about the idea, about the prospect of having Christmas with Harry and Meghan having their private conversations, as you just said, pop up in a future Netflix special or in a sequel to Harry's uh, tacky memoir. But, you know, how far I would say we've come from all of this. You remember Harry's, you know, arrogant demand that the royal family apologise and uh, acknowledge their guilt for the treatment. Um, now we are seeing the quite opposite of it all. Pride comes before a fall. The king's actually stood his ground throughout all of this quite wisely. And in the end now, it's, of course, it's Prince Harry who has um, who has had have, has made what well the, the humiliating uh, climb down. Rafe, I can't imagine any member of the royal family would want them there because of the the damage, the hurt that they have caused. Queen Camilla has been personally criticised. Mm -hmm. The king, there was no public tribute to the king on his seventy fifth birthday, but there was a private call which they leaked. Uh, whereas in the, his seventieth birthday, it was a very moving tribute from William and Harry to their father, uh, and. Oprah Winfrey, the book, Spare, yeah. I mean, it just goes on and on. Well, just look, let's, let's just put this into everyday human context, you know. Imagine, you know, waging war on your family for years, mm. uh, you know, uh, trashing your family in pri uh, and revealing private conversations behind their back to everybody, you know, causing your ailing grandmother untold anguish in her final months, undermining and, you know, attacking your father, humiliating and demeaning his wife at the very most delicate and sensitive moment in their whole lives, mm. and generally, you know, doing everything possible to hog the limelight and cast a shadow over the most important family event in 70 years. And then after all of that, and having snubbed your father just two months ago when you were in the country, yeah. now you just want to walk back in uh, for, to their lives for Christmas, perhaps because it suits your agenda mm. for self-promotion.